What is up everyone? My name is John Dawson. And thanks for clicking on this video. You won't be disappointed. We are building a massive 5,000 square foot plus. We'll see how it ends up being ICF build. That's insulated concrete form build. And this has been a task already. And I'm gonna show you what it took to get to where we are now. Um, a lot of dirt, a lot of, a lot of machines, a lot of things. So if you guys don't know, you may have seen me around, maybe you haven't, but um, I built this house up here all by myself. It's kind of a challenge. I built it a couple years ago, um, doing all, all the tasks myself. It's a little 1300 square foot house. The reason I built that one was we were gonna build this one first and buy an RV, uh, but when we looked at the RVs that we needed to fit our dogs and our kids and everything else, we were looking at almost $100,000 just to get an RV, get the hookup and all that other stuff done. So I was like, let me see how close to 100,000 I can get by building our own house. And so that's what we did is we built that one, landed pretty close, and um, we've been living in that one, which is technically the guest house. And now it's time to dive into the main house. So without further ado, let's dive into what it took to get this build to where it is now. And we're gonna document the whole process from this episode one all the way to the very end. So make sure to like and subscribe so you can see this process because it's gonna be insane. I'm gonna be doing the majority of the work myself, but I'm also bringing in contractors for this one because this is a little too much for me to do all by myself. I could, but I don't want to. So where we started was we wanted to clear the build site and about six months ago, I took a skid steer um, that I already had here and I was like, I'm just gonna clear some of the organics off here so we can get an idea of where this build is gonna go um, because we were gonna bring our designer out here to kind of look at the build site to help um, conceptualize what the build was gonna look like and how things were gonna land on the land, right? So I scraped some of that out, just super, you know, basically just getting the grass off there and kind of showing where the spot is. Have a designer out here. One thing that we wanted to key in on is we wanted more sun coming through the windows on the build during the, during the winter, and we wanted less sun coming in to the windows during the summer. So we wanted to position the house to where in the winter, wherever the sun lands, it's gonna hit the windows um, that we want them to hit. And during the summer, it's going to hit the, the spots where the windows are gonna be more shaded. So that's where we ended up here. And then the next step was, okay, I need, to, I need to get some dirt moved because one thing that's happening with this build before we move the dirt was everything was sloped in. So all the water would drain into this area. It was kind of like a little spoon because right here, the, the, the hill went up, the driveway went up. And then dip down and then over here the driveway went up and dipped down so everything would rush into here and obviously we're standing on a hill here and this rushes down into the build so what i did i took a skid steer and i cut all of this flat i cut it down about five feet from the road here i cut the hump out which is about five feet and then from this side i cut down the road about four and a half feet so one thing that i know you're already going to say is john why are you using a skid steer a dozer would be a lot easier to do this with that is true a dozer and excavator but there's a few reasons why I went with a skid steer. One, I am really good at a skid steer. I've been in skid steers my entire life and, and they're just really easy to use and you can go quick with them. And on top of that, these, these track loaders that we have nowadays are just beastly machines um, and they can really maneuver and manipulate small spaces without tearing up stuff that you've already done, right? So what I did here is I cut this all down about four and a half feet. Right now it's sitting at about three feet cut down and I cut down a little bit more. And um, where that mound is, where you can kind of see the nose of my truck up there, I also later, I didn't catch it on film, but I went through and I just cut that straight so that basically when you drive into this build site, it's all flat, right? And where the skid steer is now, that's where we're gonna put that retaining wall, kind of right here in the front where the, where the, the shrubs are. And that way you drive in, we'll have a retaining wall, the build site will be flat, we'll have basically an easy, easy build here. Um, it's just, it just was a lot easier for me to conceptualize the build rather than build it and then backfill it later. So using a skid steer is really easy. If you guys are scared of, of getting in one thing and you won't be able to use it, they're, they're very simple machines. Um, you spend a day inside one, you'll be pretty, pretty proficient at it. So what I'm doing is I'm scraping the dirt out roughly, right? Over here, I'm digging this out. I get all the dirt loose and then I use a skid steer to just push it to where I want it to go. It's a great way to move dirt kind of a, a short distances, but without having to load it up and trailer it out. Uh, it moves a lot quicker than a dozer or an excavator uh, with, a, with a blade. So that's why I chose this. And it worked great because you don't tear up what you've already done behind you with the skid steer since it's a little bit lighter, doesn't dig in as much with these rubber tracks. So overall, I just dug it all out and uh, it was a process. It was a process, but we got it done. So it's looking good. This was just because I, one, I didn't want my house sitting way up off the ground. And two, um, I wanted to mitigate some of that water and be able to divert it with some culverts 
off to the side. So the only water that we have to really deal with is a little bit of water coming down from here, but we're gonna have some retaining walls and some drainage here as well. So it should protect our build from all the water that would have originally sloped to the build. So that was the first thing that I did with the skister was just cut out this entire build site by about four and a half feet, give or take, across the whole area. And I pushed that dirt to the back to level out the backside. And I don't need, I wouldn't need to do this. I could have just dug my footings, built the house and then graded everything afterwards. But I wanted to see how the build would sit on the land before I built it, right? I wanted to know where I wanted my grade to be. Where did I want my floor to go? Um, how high off the ground was the, the, the entry door gonna be? How, how high off the ground was my roof gonna be from, from grade? Um, I wanted to know all those things. So I just pushed all the dirt out, flattened everything out, got it close, looked at the design again, and then I got a dozer once I was confident in what I had, and I just used the dozer to kind of compact the clay that I had moved and also get a little bit more level. I was able to throw a laser level on the dozer to get things within about an inch. And this just makes my job easier. Again, it's not necessary. It just makes my job easier because I know I have a constant now, right? I can pull my string lines on a flat surface and mark my footing layout or my crawl space layout a little easier than if I have a stake up here and then it drops five feet and then I have a stake down there. It's just, it's just easier for me. It's extra dirt work. Um, if you do this for a living, you'll probably do it in a lot less labor intensive way, obviously. But because I am doing this myself, I, I wanted to flatten it out and then dig it out. So once I got it flattened out, I moved on to stakes, right? So I wanted to stake out the, the, the perimeter of my home to figure out exactly where it's supposed to sit in the direction that we, we planned for the build. And then also um, where my, my different spots of the build were gonna go. We have some jogs out the back, we have game room, we have a basement. I wanted to figure out all that, where it goes. So I did that with jet stakes and string lines. First, where are you lining up your building? Where is it facing? Is it going this way? Is it going this way? It's pretty wide range, especially when you're on land. So if you're going with a, an existing row that you wanna line off of or an existing building, figure that out. Get your two stakes at your corner. This is 96 feet, eight inches. I marked that and I pulled my line in the direction that I want my build to face, right? Those two stakes are gonna be really important. You're gonna use them a lot. So to get the corners, I started with, I'm spinning in circles here, this first corner where the game room's in the back room. So I know that it is 90 feet to the back corner of that game room. And I know that from this pin to that pin over there is 96 feet, eight inches. Now I enter that into the calculator by doing 96 feet, eight inches run and 90 feet rise. Cause I'm going, I'm running 96 feet and I'm rising 90 feet. And then I'm gonna hit diagonal on my calculator. That's gonna give me a number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook my tape measure on this pin down here and I'm gonna pull it at an angle to that back corner. Simultaneously, I'm gonna grab another tape measure and put it on this pin and pull it to that corner as well. I want my 90 mark and my diagonal mark to meet at that corner. And then I'm going to set that pin right inside that triangle there. That way I know that corner is square. Now on this build, because it's complicated and I'll put a screenshot up of the floor plan, there are a lot of angles. I have to pull my Pythagorean theorem on each individual corner to get this perimeter because I can't just square, you know, 90 by 996, eight, and then guess the middle work. I have to pull each individual corner of every, even the little two foot jogs over there. I have to pull every last one of those so I can square up my build. And I'll make a separate video on how to do that if you guys want to learn how to actually pull square on a build. So once I pulled those squares, got those pins set, then I went through and I spray painted all of the areas um, where I needed to excavate to, which was, I marked out the build to the outside of my ICF walls. And then I went and I spray painted my six and a half inches past that. And then I knew with the bucket, as long as I got the, um, that line removed, I would have enough room for my footings, right? There is a bit of a jog on the, or a little bit of a curve on one side of the build because you need to overdig for deeper footings, right? So if you're going, I would say any more than four feet deep, um, you really wanna overdig a little bit so you can get back behind that wall and get it installed and get things set and get things braced and all that other stuff, get your waterproofing on it and all that other stuff. So um, here you'll see that the, the, the trench itself actually kind of separates out a little bit. Um, that was on purpose because we needed to have more space behind that to get behind those walls. So once I got all that done, I got an excavator, wrong excavator. They delivered me the wrong one, it was too small. But while I waited for them to deliver the right one, I went ahead and dug out the perimeter of the build, getting everything dug out so I knew where the perimeter was. 
Now I'm doing a crawl space with pier and beam foundation on this ICF house. So my eye joists will lag into my concrete walls and then we'll have some piers where, where they're needed in the middle. And then um, we'll have, you know, the rest of the, the floor will land on the outside perimeter. So I went ahead and dug out all my crawl space. Now, the reason why I dug out all of the crawl space is because if I wanted to do a, say a three foot crawl space all the way across the building, I would have these little channels that were six feet deep, but I'd have to make them, you know, anywhere, I have 24 inch footing. I'd have to make them six, seven feet wide so I can get to the access each side of that stem wall. So once I created a seven foot swath on each side, there's like a four foot swath of, of, of dirt in the middle. And I was like, why am I leaving? Like, what's the point of that? So I went ahead and excavated the entire crawl space just gave me clean lines, gave me the ability to get into the hole, um, just get it flattened out, get it laser leveled. I don't have to worry about having to shoot lasers across mounds of dirt. Everything was flat. I can shoot my laser, I can set my forms, and we're good to go. My spot is here, so that's two courses of ICF block. So when I pour my 12-inch footing here and I pour my 12-inch footing here, that'll maintain that that 32 inches, which means when I stack two ICF blocks, it'll end up right where the next ICF box comes off this this edge, this step footing here. So this is my control point, and I'm going to drag out all of this from this point all the way throughout this portion. All right guys, so this is getting somewhat <laughs> nitty gritty. So I've gotten this all leveled out with a laser level here. Uh, if you can see, it's rock, okay? That is bad and good. Good because our foundation is going to literally be lagged into the rock of the earth, which is great for ICF, very strong, very demure. Um, but the other issue is you can't really excavate rock cleanly, right? If you're doing like select fill, you can have really clean trenches, really clean lines. Um, and it's butamous, right? In this case, uh, not so much. It's a little scratchy, a little scrapey. Um, I'm actually gonna be leaving some of this limestone here because I can actually use it to fill in low spots and then I can compact it and we'll still be good. Um, so I'm gonna leave, you have a whole pile of this limestone that I've kind of scraped off. I'm gonna actually leave it here so that I can use it for fill in places that I may need to fill up maybe an inch or two. Um, I really wouldn't go more than maybe an inch or two of using that for fill. But it, it will save time. Like if I have a couple spots throughout this 600 linear feet of, of footing, it would be nice to fill out, you know, some, some gaps here and there and not have to worry about just dumping extra, you know, yard of concrete for, for no reason. Gone to the basement. Now the basement is what I call my bunker. It is going to be about 10 feet deep and it's going to be um, under my garage floor, which is a 16 inch slab um, with Fortress floor system a 16 inch insulated concrete slab that the cars will park on, but will also be the roof of my, my bunker, right? On that bunker wall, we're gonna have concrete core ICF all the way around. So for a few days, it rained a ton, the excavator was broken. They just finished fixing the excavator like five minutes ago. I'm gonna start digging out this basement. Um, I'm gonna dig it out. I'm gonna over dig it because obviously you need space to move around the outside of your walls when you're building them so that you can install your walls, you can brace them and all that other stuff. So I'm given a three foot uh, over excavation here on the basement. We're going down 10 foot, what is it? I think it's to the bottom of the footings, it's gonna be 10 foot. Uh, I wrote it down. This is, why, this is why I write things down. 10 foot, two inches to the bottom of the footings, nine foot, two inches to the bottom of where the slab will be. So I'm gonna start just hunking dirt out of here. Um, I need to clean up a little bit down there, but it's all muddy, so I'll probably just get some of the water out of that and then uh, leave that for tomorrow when it dries out a little bit, so. Dig that down, I had to go down 10 feet, two inches because of the limestone that we hit. I went down about five feet and we were good. We were good. We we're pulling up crushed or uh, weathered limestone. Once I got down to about 
eight feet or so, I just hit like solid limestone. I almost gave up, but I kept banging through it, banging through it. Once I went through about 12 inches of solid limestone, I got back to some more weathered limestone. So I was able to pull out more weathered limestone. And then once I hit about 10 feet, I hit more solid limestone. And um, since I was only two inches off, I went ahead and said, 10 feet is good. We'll just raise the elevation of the house two inches um, above grade, and we'll just backfill that two inches onto the house on the outside. So we got down 10 feet for the, for the um, concrete floor in the bunker. And everything else was excavated anywhere from four and a half feet to six and a half feet. And it was, it was a process. It was a lot of dirt, a lot of moving. As you guys can see here on, on this video, it is just a ton of dirt. The crushed limestone, I was actually going to leave around the build site because we're actually gonna crush that up and use that as road base um, so we can make sure that our concrete trucks and whatnot can get into um, the build site without getting stuck in clay and whatnot. The other thing that I did on here that I wanna point out is um, to save a little bit of money, I don't know how much, not too much, but I'm wanting to actually have the concrete trucks pour directly into my footings without having to use a pump truck. We're gonna have to use a couple pump trucks during this build, but if I could eliminate one pump truck, that would, you know, I think it's around 2,000 bucks. Um, that would be great. So for my footings, I cut a little pathway where a concrete truck can actually back into the crawl space and we're gonna start hopefully pouring in the basement, then we'll go to the back corner of the house and then they can drive out and pour all of these spots. And then once they drive out, we'll form up that little eight foot um, spot there where they're driving through, we'll form that up and then they can pour that on their way out. And that way we don't have to get a pump truck. That's my, that's in theory, that's what I'm going for, but um, we'll see if that actually happens. So that's where we're at right now. It has been a process. The next step is getting these forms framed up. That's gonna be the next video is framing up these, fo these forms and getting these forms poured. Um, getting our rebar in there, getting all of our elevations right, our step footings done. And um, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if there's anything that you want more specifics on, more education on, and we can get that posted for you guys. But I appreciate you guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love, y'all.